Hi everybody, I have the flu. It's the last day of NAM, but I'm sitting here with Guillaume. Um, how are you? Hello Warren, I'm great. Thank Wonderful. you. This is the last day of NAM. I don't have the flu. Yeah, so I'm going to try and stay yeah. away from him. <laughs> so tell us about Decibel. Decibel is the second plugin from the brand Process Audio. Mm -hmm. It's a multimeter. It comes as a standalone app yep. or a plugin. It is completely modular. It can talk to iOS device. All right, so let me show you what modular means. Modular means that you have a Canva in the background mm -hmm. or a grid, and you can create the meter of your dreams. Lovely. Lovely, right? The meter of your dreams. The meter of your dreams. You can do, you can rearrange the modules. There's a bunch of modules. Uh, V1 will ship with most useful version. Mm -hmm. There's a phase scope, there's LFS metering, there's a histogram, there's a spectrum analyzer, there's a phase scope, there are VU meters. Uh, pretty much everything's in there, but we envision to develop more modules as people you know, have a need for something, we can make it and people will be able to use those But modules. I immediately like that. Because some, there are some good yeah. products on the market, but I agree. Sometimes I just want to see what the level is, whether it's <clears> clipping. Great. And I might have one or two other things. So the fact that you can customize it is yes. actually huge. It is. One cool thing is that you can create color profiles and you can customize the meter to your mood, your studio colors. Mm -hmm. We have some great presets. Mm -hmm. And of course, you can access the color palette and make it, make it the way you want it to be. While you're doing death metal, you can go for full-blown... Yes, we have. Devil's yes, colors. You, you, you can. Uh, <laughs> we've, we have some great preset series named after Marvel superheroes. So this is the Black Panther. Nice. Uh, this is Captain America. Nice. Uh, this is the Hulk. Uh, this is Iron Man. We're going to stick with Iron Man because it's pretty. Okay. Uh, the cool thing about all that is that, as I said before, it talks to iOS devices. Great. Any piece of iOS device. We're trying to, right now, we've made it work on iPad 4s, with, which are. 2002, mm -hmm. 2012 model, so that's like eight years old. Sure. Uh, uh, we're trying to get back in time and get those old iPad 2s that you have in a drawer. Sure. You haven't thrown them away yet, yeah. just in case. Well, now's the time. Uh, Good because idea. they're pretty much obsolete now. If you go to the App Store, very little applications are available to you anymore. Sure. Uh, but this one would work. That's really smart because I, I have <coughs> a lot of iPads. Yeah. And you know, we bought the first one, the second one, and yep. the third one. Yeah. I so know you, can, you can yeah. find good use uh, for them again. And the way it works is that it's like, if you see at the bottom here, some tabs, it's like Excel spreadsheets. Mm -hmm. So you would create a layout and you would send the layout to any device. So this one is called R. I presume that's the one on the right. So this one here is a mirror image of what we see on this yep. iPad. So let's say I'm bored with this uh, view, I could add something else next to it and it will show on the iPad. Nice. I can custom, I can completely customize it. So these are pretty big setups. We don't really expect people yeah. to have that many of them, although you never know. Uh, and you can recall all your presets. This one is an interesting guy. Are you familiar with uh, LUFS metering? I, I am, and I get asked about it Constantly. Constantly. There's so much confusion yep. in LUFS. So this one is called the super meter. Uh, this one is for mixing purposes. Looks like a, you know, a car thingy mm -hmm. when it shows you your speed. Well, now it shows you your, your level. Yep. At the, in, the, in the inner circle, this is your LUFS integrated. So it's, since we've been recording, it's recording now, we're at minus 14. Well, it happens to, we're listening off of Spotify right now. So okay. as you know, as some of you might know, Spotify levels everything at minus 14. If it is mm -hmm. like death metal song or the song from the 60s, mm -hmm. everybody is at the same level. So that's no surprise that we're seeing minus 14 here. And the one, the other circle is your LUFS short term. This is a window of three seconds. So it mm -hmm. shows you your average level over three seconds. So you can understand why you'd be, uh, where this number comes from, that's an average of all those numbers, right? right? right. Uh, so this one is really useful for mixing engineers, for example. If you're working with uh, artists and you're on revision number 12, mm -hmm. and you really, really want to finish your project, you probably should make sure that your, uh, your, all your revisions are at the same level. If you deliver a version that is softer, quieter than the previous version, length, you're being fooled by, le by levels, and your artist might say, yeah, I like the previous version better. Mm -hmm. Well. Put them on the same level. This allows you to do that. Deliver all your revisions at right. the same level. On top of that, 
you get what we call the true nine. You might be familiar with this uh, measuring system uh, with other products called PLR, PSR. Mm -hmm. This is the dynamic range above your average level. So in the RMS world, this is RMS. Uh, it would be peak over average, so the difference between your peak and your average level. This one is pretty much the same in the LUFS norm. That would be true peak above your average LUFS level. So this shows you the dynamic of your song. If I were to put a histogram which shows uh, same thing, the LUFS short term, there's something pretty funny I can show you. So that's cool histogram. Uh, let me show you the true dine. There you go. So mm. you have, let's reset. So this shows you your average level and your dynamic or your track. So let's say I am going to play a song that is probably, probably the loudness, loudest song of all time from a fam very famous metal band. Mm -hmm. So you're going to end up at minus 14 on Spotify. Yep. And this is your dynamic range. Oh, wow. Something about six dBs tops. Actually, I'm surprised it's that much. Yes, <laughs> of, yeah. <laughs> uh, of a dynamic range. Uh, yeah. But if you were to switch to something that something that breathe a lot more like good old fashioned Bob Marley, oh yes, you would see something completely different. Oh well, uh, yeah. it would still be minus fourteen average, but the kick bounces, the dynamic is back. Mm -hmm. So the good thing about those streaming, streaming platforms is that they've really put an end to the loudness war in a way. Mm -hmm. There is absolutely no point anymore in delivering your mixes with very little dynamic range. I mean, sure. sometimes it's genre appropriate. I'm not going to argue with that. Some genre, this is the sound of certain types of music. Mm -hmm. But now you actually have a choice. You can take advantage of the whole dynamic range at your disposal and make mm -hmm. your tracks so just bounce, have loads of bass if you want to breathe and actually not be fatiguing to the audience. Yeah. Uh, so this shows that. Uh, I'm just trying to give you some use cases of no, how the fantastic. product works. Yeah. Let's say, uh, I've been to one of Rose recently, and they have this uh, theater where mm -hmm. they mix in 5.1 for gravity. Sure. Uh, uh, and they have like five different VU meters in front of them. Each one of them mm -hmm. is a channel of the 5.1 system. So well, what, I, what this sort of springs to my mind yes. immediately is I find something I like the sound on on Spotify, yeah, yeah. and I analyze it and yeah. see how much of a dynamic range. Absolutely, you can see why yeah. it sounds it sounds so good. So there are different skins <laughs> for uh, the meter. So this one is the, the destroyed <coughs> one. Uh, you can do that. You can have each meter represent a different uh, channel. Uh, we've got some fancy looking different mm. skins. So this is the modern one, and this is the vintage one. Uh, and let's say you don't own six, seven, or eight iPads, you can. Use just one. Yep. If you want to, that's pretty more common. And do just that. So you'd have all your favorite modules on Great. the right. And this is just it. This is the mirrored view of this. And let's say I don't like this guy here. I can get rid of it. And let's say I want to see a nice VU. Boom, here we go. And it's instantly replaced. That's here. fantastic. You can see the relationship. So even though a VU might be quote unquote peaking, yes. it doesn't mean that that uh, is necessarily going into distortion. Or no, nope. I think that's. I, I think many of us rely on one method yep. of, of, of metering. So yes, I, I love this idea. Yeah, there's different systems. Uh, there's many, many, many use cases mm -hmm. depending on if you are a mixer, a producer, a mastering engineer, if you are. Uh, uh, in a home studio, or if you're just making videos for YouTube, mm -hmm. this is a, a big help. Like you absolutely yeah. want all, all across your channel, you want your uh, uh, your videos to have the same level, or sure. you don't want to feed it too too quiet or too loud because otherwise YouTube will adjust for you, yeah. and that's just a shame. For people who work in DAWs, mm -hmm. uh, honestly, the biggest advantage is you put it on your bus master. Yep, and you never ever have to scroll all the way right because that's usually where you put the bus master. Yep. and Go for the plugin and open it. Mm -hmm. And don't even have to take some real estate of your screen. Yep. It's just here at all times on the right, very affordable, and you can enhance your system as you get more iPads. Sure. Uh, and let's say you don't even own any iPads. You don't. I mean, you don't need to have those iPads. You could just do this, and right. I have no iPads connected, and that's my uh, meter for now. Wonderful. Uh, this one's actually pretty big. The default preset would work for 13-inch screens and would be just like just like that. I imagine tons of mastering engineers are, will love it. Yes, uh, mastering engineers, but really like like I said before, like pro even producers, like you would see here, uh, 
this is the level of your verses, mm -hmm. chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, True. and last chorus we have to mm -hmm. explode. So you can, can actually see the dynamic of your track and make sure that you know it's uh, mm -hmm. consistent and you, ha you have control over your levels, basically. So it's also useful for, for producers. Plus, I mean, these days so many producers are forced into mastering yeah, their own stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a useful tool that would just help you all the way if you just want to deliver for a streaming platform or, you know, uh, actually give it to the mastering engineers. This can be used throughout, you know, all the stages of music production. Voilà. How much is it? Under 300 bucks. Okay. We're trying to make it as affordable as possible. Uh, it's only available for iOS devices. So it works on iPhones as well, like bigger iPads, iPhones. Uh, not Android compatible yet. It's quite a bit of a challenge. We're going to make it work, but we need some time. And we're hoping it will be ready uh, in two months. So that'll take us in March, April-ish. Fantastic. Voila. Voila. I'm with my friend Tom from UA. I'm going to give you the elbow. It's got, got, I've got the NAMM tracks. Yeah, I don't yet, so. Yeah, so job. I'm going to try not to give it to you. I went to the UA, what would you call it? Was it a launch party? Yeah, we did a launch party for all of our close friends and, you know, press, and so you came to that. It's wonderful. Amazing experience in yeah, a planetarium, keeping with the space theme. It was great, but I got to learn all about the, the galaxy and the Milky Way and everything. Yeah, exactly. You take for granted, I suppose, like yeah. how big Earth feels, but in yeah. the. In the Lunaverse, we've been nicknaming it for the NAMM show. Lunaverse? The Lunaverse. Earth's kind of small. <laughs> so, I have a million questions. I don't know anything about it yet. Brilliant. Seriously, I've done nothing off camera. So, tell us all about Luna. So, you may have used the Apollo console, which is an application running on your computer. And that let you set up cue mixes in low latency using the DSP and, and either monitor through or commit through like you would with analog gear. The, these old tools, right? So that's still, Apollo console, still a product we're going to develop and runs alongside your Apollo when you're using third-party DAWs and things like uh, offline tuning packages and you know, restoration the, packages. The frustration if you're a DAW user, a different DAW, you suddenly have multiple mixers, you know. So you thought you'd overcome that by? Building the Lunar Recording System. Building but, your own uh, DAW. Yeah. Well, yeah, except we're not calling it a DAW okay. because uh, arguably, DAW is like really a third-party piece of software, sure. so you can choose your interface with right. a lot of these, right? The thing with Luna is that it's so deeply integrated to the Apollo right. that it needs an Apollo Thunderbolt interface to run it. It will only work with Apollo Thunderbolt, and it's a, it's a Mac-only application on launch, which will be in spring 2020. The big headline for everyone on Juice Like a Pro and anyone else watching, you know, it's free. It will be free. So That's really huge. Yeah. And how long have you been developing it to get it to the free status? <laughs> uh, it's about five years in development and I think over six or seven in concept. So, you know, Apollo is the, obviously a space-based term and a yeah. name for the interfaces. And it's clear that that was part of the lineage to get to the lunar, you know, destination, right? And so now we have a, the next chapter in the history of Universal Audio moving forwards. So the Lunar Recording System effectively takes everything you've seen in Apollo console and integrates it into a two-window or, or could be a single-window workflow. So you have uh, multi-track audio recording, unlimited track count, just limited to your hard disk speed and obviously the power of your computer. Unlimited buses, which is a big one. There's no like topping out at 256 or I, mean, I, I personally have never gone over I'm that. Not, yeah, but <laughs> I know what you mean. But you know, even if you have 24 buses, that's easy to do here, you know. And MIDI tracks too, so you have a single window editing for MIDI. You just press E here and you're straight into the MIDI piano roll. In notes view, for example, you can get hold of all of your MIDI notes in there. So that's that sort of fiber editing. And then you can go back to your arrange window uh, just by scaling it back straight back down or to the edit window, we call it. So you have, as you'd expect, a lot of the popular shortcuts to be able to zoom in and out and waveform zoom and all the editing. So that's that's really like the Lunar application basic form. It's You can record, you can mix, you can edit, you can do MIDI, you can write with your Apollo. But the real key thing is what happens with the integration, okay? So we can come back. If you want to ask any questions about editing along the way or any particular features, just drop well, them in. That's going to be the one. I mean, so just so we're about to start this, I, did, I didn't... We just talked about it. Let's talk about it, but we, I didn't ask you any questions. Yeah, yeah. The number one coming from Pro Tools. I mean, I still believe the one strength that Pro Tools has 
is the editing, audio editing. We know there's been so many DAWs that come out that have challenged them in so many ways. So I would like to know what the editing capabilities are. Okay, well, let's, let's start with that then. So let's Great. go back to here. So we have, as you'd expect, track height, so you're able to set here. Yep. So that's medium as default, large, extra large. We can drop, drop onto this track and I'll show you, you know, we can do that low, you know, individually. Yep. We have Zoom. It's a contextual editing, so um, over here we have, for example, in the bottom left-hand corner you have trim. Yep. You know, we can select something and delete. This is on grid, so up here we have snap engaged. You're able to, uh, right now, follow the snap, but as you'd expect, if you hold down command, you're in uh, clutch mode off the, the snap grid, so you're in samples. Yep. Top left-hand corner is a fade, so you're able to do your fading. Oh, nice. You have fade shape and you can click on this little dot here with a right click and do equal power and equal gain for different types of fade behavior. Interesting. So that's there. Do the you have a clip, clip gain, gain function? We do. So this, this top bar here shows you uh, also those parameters, but here is also where you would grab it to move. So that's how you move your bass guitar track around, for example. Yep. Here is the gain per clip. And next okay. to this, the most game-changing feature for me, because it's so quick, is the clip pitch, which is right here. So you can double-click on this and try things. So my favorite thing to do is, uh, well, there's many things, but uh, take a guitar part, for example. You could take this guitar track, yep. and you could duplicate the track, and then take this track here, the copy, put it down 12 semitones or an octave. Yep. And so now you have an electric guitar that's now generated a bass line or like an, uh, an octave divider pedal effect. Nice. And then you could process this. Best sounding pitch shift I've heard doing that in real time. And it yeah. keeps almost the phase integrity with the yeah. parallel. So Great. I've done bass guitar octave up fuzz it, make yeah. an octave up fuzz. Or one of the big ones for you when you're songwriting and vocal tracking, duplicate your lead vocal, chop it up, Quickly yeah. try third up, fifth up, all the different yeah. harmonies, obscure choices. Yeah. Learn it, sing it back in, or oh, it sounds that good, you can leave it. So if you want to do real fine tuning and fixing, you would still run, you can run audio units in here, so you could learn, load a tuning plugin of third party if you needed to. But for small things, I've, I've done it where I've had like 95% really good performance and then one note of a guitar solo that's just a tiny bit sharp and I've just been able to kick it down with that just a teeny bit and it's fine and it saves you having to have that whole loading something, printing it, leaving it there running in real time so that's that's a huge feature. Uh, you'll probably do a lot of time editing and things like that. I, so. Yeah, I do editing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's a couple of different things. First that would be just regular comping. Um, so like if I just create on this guitar track, we have a thing called versions. So when you pop out this little button here, you have uh, versions pop up. This is V1, which is the first version of your tracking, for example. Right. And if you can press uh, control backslash, you have V2, a new version to record onto. So we could yeah. obviously then record uh, a new take. Right. But what's cool is that could be your comping as well. So, you know, we have uh, the ability to just very quickly with these keys, shift up and down arrow, go between the versions. A lot of the key commands you would be used to, so you just press C, up, play, you know, up the version, paste it in yep. with V. Great. So you can build your comps that way. Another really cool feature is loop record. So, like, let's say we're going to loop record for just a couple of, uh, couple of bars there. Yep. Let's do that one there. Um, if you watch this here, it's V1, V2 is what we've been recording onto, but because loop is engaged, I'll go into record. When we get to the end of this section, it's going to loop around and just keep looping so our, our artists could play and experiment. And it automatically starts creating takes instead of versions. So right. takes are like chunks that you're looping. Sure. Versions are full length, so it should be very easy to right. go through and find everything. Then you can create playlists across all your drum tracks in, in input monitor and obviously then do take after take after take. You don't have to do like a, an edit group as such, you can just select all the tracks and make a new Great. version. Okay. I remember when I first started on Pro Tools, there was no kind of takes or playlists, so you had to you had to start two bars away, then each take was a millimeter to the right, a millimeter to the right, a millimeter to the oh, right. Oh, right, so right. you could just like peel them back from yeah. the beginning, like just sort of find the little slice of tape. <laughs> That's how you did it, so you did vocal. So all the painful vocals. things you've been through. Oh yeah, because I've been That's doing <laughs> since the mid 90s, I've watched the evolution. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, yeah. That's crazy. So another cool feature is uh, related to this pitch functionality on the on the clip itself is uh, what we call warping. So uh, in clips here, you can select warps, and every audio file that you drop in or you record, it auto detects all of the transient uh, transients. And you also have, as you'd expect, the ability to tab through all of your transients as well. 
so you can easily like mark up and move through. But the beautiful thing with warp is that you can engage the warps here and then very quickly just uh, adjust the timing of oh, nice. your performance. And the beautiful thing here is there's actually How five. are you engaging the warp? So you just command click on the little triangle to uh, uh, okay. tell it that it's an active warp. But that's there the whole time? Yeah, it just will find it like for that. you immediately. I like that. I so, don't use that function that often, but then I remember, whether how am I getting it? Oh yeah, I have to go over here and select it. And, yeah, it's so the, nice that it's just there. Yeah, and the reason it's there yeah. is that if you bring in a, a, a loop or something with tempo information, you can set tracks in either time or tempo mode. If you set yeah. them in tempo, you can change the tempo of your project and it will automatically move. So you could record a song and at the end of it go, you know what, I wish that song was three BPM faster, put everything in tempo mode yeah. and it will just, you can follow, you can just increase the tempo. Great. Or you can do some stuff. I have stuff. had to do that. Yeah, exactly. Many times, I was, uh, I was a star producer on X Factor for a couple of years. Oh, okay. On show days, they'd be like, just change the key. And so it's pretty tough when it's all organic instruments. So you'd have to like replay half of them and then time stretch the ones that would bear the time stretching. But you'd always get that warbling sound. And, yeah. Absolutely. So that's the beauty with the pitch yep. on here is that you could just try the whole song at semitone up and then find the range for your singer. You yep. know, it's so cool. Yeah, so it's the, great. The thing that you're talking about where you, you exceed the capability of the time stretch, yep. that's still in, in here. It's just that we do some really cool stuff. So if I if I go beyond the algorithm's capability, it shows you that you're now okay. stretching further than it's capable. And so you, you will, it will play, but you could get some really interesting oh, artifacts. Yeah, yeah. So there are actually a load of algorithms. You have, this is a guitar, it's set to polyphonic, but you have a monophonic algorithm, which can be really good for bass, guitar, and vocal. Then you have vary speed, which is more of the tape type kind of approach. And then we've, we've made our own, so some of these, you know, we've sort of worked in conjunction with some really good time stretch algorithm developers, but, um, you know, here you've got UA stretch and razor blade, and the razor blade one in particular is designed for drum transient editing. So if you've ever used this type of um, warp functionality without... I'm very nervous to edit my drums that way. Me too. Yeah, I typically I would rather stretch them over and find an edit point that's slightly wrong. Almost more of a tape thing. Cut it, yeah. find a way of getting exactly. it Exactly. I'll sometimes, you know, if I move a kick and a snare and I've got too much space in there, I'll bring half of this one over here and then I'll stagger it so the cuts are in different places. So like you don't masking hear the cuts. Flip, flip. Yeah, masking the cuts. Because I've never really believed on my DAW that the warp really is effective. Absolutely. And, well, it mess it, and, and can mess with the uh, um, face far too much. Big time. So yeah, this yeah. is the thing. I've always been the same as you. I just yeah. do manual chops and treat yeah. it like I'm razor blading yeah. on a tape yeah. machine. So we developed the razor blade algorithm so sure. you can preserve all of that transient information. So Great. it's really designed for you know, it is really designed for these small moves of, you know, drum transients and the things that will preserve that impact. So you, you can actually do that and, and move like a snare that's a little late or something mm -hmm. in a multi-track and it's pretty good, you know, phase-wise. So, oh, uh, you know, at the moment there's no collection of sure. all multi-track drums for editing, but you can still select all drums and do a manual Great. slice on the line anyway. Wonderful. So there's, uh, and, and in that, um, mode, we have some really cool features back on the clips for crossfading, just to show you something that's quite quick. If you uh, separate a region, we now have what I think I'm, I'm calling it, I don't know if this is the official term, sorry Connor and Lev, but this is a, I call it mirroring crossfade because you drag this fade handle and it will mirror the in and oh, that's out. That's a nice idea. Much quicker. Yeah. We have a relative snap, so you can have absolute, or you can, if something starts just off a bar line, you can preserve that, but still sure. move it a bar later and all that sort of stuff. Um, but interestingly, we have this thing called Shift Workflow. So there's this tiny little menu at the top, um, which gives you these workflow contextual menus. So there's some stuff to do with metronome, pre and post roll. Then we have, uh, interestingly, a little MIDI controller keyboard built in. So you can turn this on and then use the keyboard to play and write on a plane with a laptop. So nice. you can play your instruments in here with that. But then the, the beautiful one here is this uh, editing workflow where you, bar. Where, go back to that, and where are you sourcing the virtual instruments from? Oh, so they're on instrument tracks, which we'll get to in a little bit, oh, okay. but they're all in here. So whichever one's in record arm, okay. ready to I pick see. up that MIDI data will Great. You know, be Great. played effectively. And there's lots of good editing functionality in a lot of different packages, but I think Luna just gives you this really immediate musicality to it. Have you been using it yourself? You've been I have, yeah, I've been using it for about five months or so, oh, wow. testing it through all the different alpha phases and all the different functionality. It's been it's been really fun and it sounds amazing, that's the thing. So right. if we move past the audio editing yep. and then sort of, obviously MIDI editing is very similar, you can copy, insert, 
trim regions and as you as you explained you can go between the uh, the clip itself and the notes where you're able to get in here and actually do things like control the MIDI notes get get rid of the notes and stuff like that it's all single single window editing right here um, so that's that side of things but when you get into the mixer it's just a whole new world right okay. so at the top we have the input strip which also is where the instruments are loaded uh, then below that we have uh, a tape section where you can run our what we're calling lunar extensions so that's the sort of third big flagpole in the ground on the moon for Luna right now. So this is uh, running natively on the Mac. So all of Luna itself is obviously a native application, but when it works in conjunction with the Apollo for the record arming and low latency workflow, you use the DSP there when necessary. Interesting. And then you also use the host CPU. Okay, good. So it's not eating you know, your computer's CPU that much, so you'll still be able to run a, a whole bunch of plugins, etc. Yeah, and the big thing here is that latency sort of a thing of the past now because yep. you would previously you've done this 80 track mix or so and then you decide you need to overdub something but you're already on 10 24 sample buffer yep. and how do you do that yep. well, with luna you don't worry about it you do sometimes your you can't mix. even arm it yeah exactly you arm it going to record and it crashes yep. so the beautiful thing with this is we have something called arm which is hilarious because that's what you're talking about doing yep. but yep. arm if you see here stands for accelerated real-time monitoring and it yep. shows you here how many uh, channels mono or stereo you have per apollo so you're going to have four Apollos daisy chained uh, on Thunderbolt. Okay. Each box will give you more channels on Thunderbolt with DSP capability. Sure. So as soon as a track like this guitar is in record enable, we're now leveraging the, the accelerated so real time So zero monitoring. latency, it becomes like, you know, HDX basically. Yeah, so you can still be eight, 80 channels into a mix yeah. and then still punch in. Great, that's amazing. So if we go to the input stage here, you'll see there that we've got um, this track so where do I select? Just to say I want to do uh, a quartet and I've got four mics and I've got a couple of sets of stereo mics so I've got eight inputs. How do I tell it that those eight inputs need to go on here? Okay, so these are those tracks here. Yep. Let's say this is bass. I'm yep. going to enable all of these. Yep. So we're going to select input one for this track. Yep. And then this next track here I'll select input two and then input three and input four. And then I'll put them all in to record enable. Wow. And that's our input selections. So now we have all the controls of the Apollo right here. So I have the gain. I can hop through the channels to see, you know, my levels. But is it automatic? As soon as I go to record, it's it puts them on these? It will, yeah, it will default to the first input and then obviously okay, you great. can pick up. And if you have multiple Apollos, you'll see all of those ins and outs listed right. here based off the uh, IO matrix, which is in this uh, part of the menu here. Right. You're able to customize that and then come back to Luna. Fantastic. So it's really fast, but one, one thing's really cool, if, if you're just using the same DI input, for example, yep. and this is your bass track, when we, when we record and enable this, we might want to run an Ampeg bass amp here. Yep. So I'm gonna have this up. And we'll compress, let's do Warren, nice let's do Warren's trick. DBX 160 to 1176, yep. isn't it? Yeah. So we type DBX, that comes up. Started from Dave Jordan, but yes. Well, there you go. So it's a Still LA trick. Should we call it the, the, the American yeah. bass recording trick? Yeah. So, oh, wrong 1176, but hey, forgive me, it's Doesn't one. matter. So that's there, so we have... Oh, I that actually was in, like the silver ones as well. That was in the first slot, so let's put the DBX back in. I got overexcited there. It's quite all right. So here we go, so we have... Two different views. This is the more yep. graphical view. That's the more condensed view. Yep. This one's nice, so we can see we have the Ampeg DBX and the 1176. Yep. But then on this track, we're recording guitar. It's the same input, so yep. this might be a twin with one instrument input. We're going to maximize the DSP here if we're doing overdubs. When I go to this one, it's now got nothing loaded, so I'll stick the Fender guitar amp in here, followed by an LA 2A. I oh, like this one. This one's really fat sounding. So uh, we're recording guitar. We arm this track. The yep. DSP in here is now Fender into an LA-2A. That will be printed to disc in the record path. And then we go over here and arm the bass track and it recalls the Ampeg, the DBX and the 1176. That's nice. If you're That's a producer like nice. you, yeah. you can have all your inputs on your Apollo pre-configured almost. And wow. have, if you have your template session has a bass, a guitar and everything ready sure. to roll, you arm it, it just loads up what you need ready to go. That's pretty fantastic. Thank you, yes. Persistent inputs, it's a really cool feature. Yeah, it's a really very, very cool feature. Uh, I mean, it's something that comes up a lot in our, in our academy that 
you know, people have bedrooms, they have yeah. garages, they have, I don't know, sheds, you know, and they're making money. They're actually making a living from those environments. And, but the reality is, is that they're spending their whole lives patching and repatching all the time. So this is actually a really nice feature. Yeah, big time. It really, really uh, uh, save a get huge into amount that. of time. Yeah, and because this is all using the DSP. Because what we have to do is we have templates. Eric will know because he has to find them. Oh, yeah. We have templates on our desktop. And I say to him, oh, you remember that vocal thing we did the other day? And then he has to go and find it and import it in. And it's not that big of a deal, but sometimes you don't remember which session it is, so you have to close your session down and open up. No, that wasn't that one. It wasn't that one. Oh, that's the one. Close that session down, open up a new session, and there it is. Yeah. Where here you could set, I presume you can set up like four different vocal ones. Yeah. Yeah, like. And four uh, chains. Yeah. Great. Yeah, absolutely. And also, and when that you're isn't here, eating into the CPU. It's running in DSP of the, all of this is all DSP and the Apollo. So this is all UAD2, you know, upfront real time low latency. But until you recall it, it's not doing anything to the DSP. Yeah, so if I, un if I unarm that track, we yeah. now have that DSP back for running plugins in off uh, what we call async mode in the inserts for mixing. That's really smart. So, you know, with That's a actually my favorite feature so far. That makes oh, yeah. a lot. Yeah, because now I can have a, a template session that is the same every single time. So you can have four different drum sounds, four different bass sounds, you know, whatever. Pick a number, and they're all in the same session. So yeah. you don't have to create multiple templates for different things. But we also have, this is the one I wanted to show you, is presets. Okay. Channel strip presets. You can make your own. Oh. So actually, you don't need to have four sets of drum channels up. You have your drum channels up, and you can just save them. Here's my rock sound, here's my jazz sound, here's my whatever, bottom yeah. thing. Okay. And then they'll just load up all your input strips. And the cool thing is, they'll be there saving your session. As soon as you record arm, they load up, and when you're out, they're just, they're all in so the background. So where do I get to the preset? Where, where, so, so there's this little three dots, which yeah. is your assign or copy. So you can copy settings from channel strip to channel strip. Yeah, yeah. You go to presets and then you get this contextual sort of, uh, what do we call this? Like a, a, um, a, a workflow bar, I suppose, or this is your browser yeah. on the left-hand side. Um, so here you can hit save, for example, and call that, you know, Warren's bass chain. So that's the input stage for audio tracks. And like I That's said, it's, really cool. it's persistent and you have control over that with you know, the hardware, you can go through the different settings and stuff. That's a really, really cool feature um, and it definitely plays up to the strengths of the products that you've developed. Thank you, yeah. So I really like that. So you actually have four record effects as well. So that's the unison and the four record effects. That's but then as you move below that, once a track's been printed to, to disc, you then hit the tape. So when you're on playback, it's like you're playing back off a two inch machine. So here's the thing I think you'll really dig, is you can run different tape machines. So, oh wow. So here we go, we have four machines. Let me just select a bunch of tracks here. So I'm gonna put Oxide on those, those tracks. Yeah. This is tape deck A. This is effectively like when you would have had two 24 or four 24 track machines slaved together with time code, yep. except you don't lose a track on each machine for code. Sure. And they're not 24 track machines. They're, they're as many tracks it. as you want. What, what choices do you have in tape machines? So Oxide will come with Luna. It's the first Luna extension that's free. So you get Luna, you get Oxide tape, which is like the very easy to use tape. It just has a saturation control and an on off. And you're able to globally on off Oxide here. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you, you know, there are presets in here if you so wish for certain other tape plugins. But yep. then uh, the second Luna extension we're announcing for NAM this year is the, the Studer 800 tape. So if you own the UAD2 plugin, yep. you'll get the extension for free. Otherwise, this is a, a paid option. But you'll see here, machine B is all A800. Yep. That has a more elaborate control when you need it. So what's so cool about this, the Studer 800 yep. extension, is you have individual saturation per channel. Yep. But you also have um, individual noise switches, so you can easily automate that for you know tops and tails of songs where you don't want the hiss to be audible, which sure. I know we probably all do. Yep. But you have a repro EQ and then bias per channel like you would on individual tape cards. Yep. So you can easily over bias a channel and get less top end and more of a yep. softening, or under bias it and get more distortion and raucousness. But what's so cool here is you go to the master panel for the A800, we can change tape formulation, tape speed. So as we're in play, we can run it at seven and a half ips, 15 ips, 30 ips, and all, all of these tracks, that's being a Applied. So you can have four machines, a different tape setting on your drums, a different one on your vocals, BBs, music, and create all that cohesion, but also some separation that we're used to in like digital mixing, you know? Right. 
So that Amazing. uses your host CPU. So you can see down here, you've got you know render menus and then the DSP for the UAD. So I think you super you, powerful. You guys have a, a a really you have a huge advantage. Right. And you know you do because you've developed so many plugins and so many ways of thinking that now you can bring all together. There's not that sort of separation where you feel like you're integrate bringing something else in. Like for instance, the first thing that obviously struck me was that now you don't have don't need to mix a window from a third party I/O, you know, which is always a pain in the butt. I, I get really annoyed by that. Yeah, you're just in one window, and what that yep. enables you to do yep. as well is, is punch-ins. So yep. because we have the ARM low latency, you know, uh, accelerated real-time monitoring, you can play what you just recorded, and then when you punch in, you'll hear what the live input, which yep. is something that was really hard to do with Apollo and, and a third-party DAW, but with Luna, it's just like that tape workflow. You're in and out, drop-ins. I can see the thinking, you're like, hey, other DAWs, you don't want to play nice with us, we'll just make our own DAW, so that, uh, you know, We've so made we a it. deeply integrated system, yeah. yeah. So I understand, the, makes perfect sense. So the third lunar extension you'll be yeah. super excited about is the built-in yeah. Neve Summing, Neve Wonderful. console sound. So any bus that you create, obviously you could have lots and lots of buses. I've got a reverb bus here, randomly, and a drum bus. Somebody's put a distressor on it in the show here, but yeah. let's just take, let me just move this stuff. So put my drum bus after the drums here, for example. We grab yeah. all of the drums. We're gonna send those to the drums bus. Yeah. And then I'll solo them and then I've got solo safe on the drums itself. All my drums are going to this group. They're getting hit by a distressor plugin that's instantiated in the inserts. The inserts can run audio units as well, so you could have all of your third-party plugins you love there, processing alongside UAD2. That's, that's a good question, a, a dumb one that I'm sure everybody will ask. How many instances of plugins can you have? Well, so in the inserts, you've got eight slots. Okay. And then uh, it's down to your host CPU if you're running native plugins. Or if you're using UADSP and our satellite system, it's obviously yep. down to how many of those and how juicy they are. Yeah. But okay. you know, if, if you're on a powerful Mac, uh, like a UAD Octo, you'd be able to run, you know, 30, 40, 50 UA plugins and hundreds of native plugins and, wow. and blend the two things. Lots of channels of tape and and uh, and Neve. But so what's good about the Neve here is that on the bus itself, you have nice pure digital group sound if you want, you know, standard digital summing where you instantiate the Neve, and what you get here is the 1272 line amp, or the, the makeup gain amp of a passive sure. mix bus and an early Neve. The two different impedance settings, high is, uh, the best way to describe it is more like, that sounds like a record top end, it's quite light and airy, like the sort of Neve top, right. which is beautiful on vocal buses, pianos and stuff. On the low Z, it's a bit gruntier, and you get more of that thump that you expect in the low end, so sure. that's wonderful on the drum, the drum bus. And then you have a headroom control to stage how hard you're driving into that bus. So you can build like bucket summing, right? You could have all your drums to a drum bus, guitars to a guitar bus. Each one of them hits their own Neve summing amp. And then it goes to the main mix bus, the main mix out, which could have its own as well. And you've now like nested all this saturation into this thick, fat, Neve sound coming off two inch tape with your favorite plugins and UA plugins in it. If you want to punch in to record, you use the DSP and ARM to record low latency. We've done a lot to optimize the, the, the mix of views as well. So you can just view, with command here, you can view, you can turn off the sections, for example. Yep. Or you can just view the inputs. You can just go to tape and expand out the tape. And you've got different scalability, you know, in each section. Yep. Just see your inserts. You can do list, you know, like just a name yep. view or an icon view. And this is quite cool. So the sends themselves, yeah. Uh, you can make eight internal mix sends per tr yep. channel, obviously to an unlimited amount of buses. It's very easy to just grab a bunch of tracks and make a send here, and I'll send that to my reverb that I created. And now yep. they're all ganged because the tracks are grouped. It's a lot, you know, very quick and easy to do that. Wonderful. And you can see sends on faders and pan on send. But what we've done here is also split off the cues. So if I show you those two things, sends are for internal effects, but the cues are below it here, which are easily seen on, on a little encoder view, I suppose, or yep. a pot view. Um, these are the buses within the Apollo interface. Yep. So this is a real-time low latency DSP mixer to give your artist headphone mixes without any latency. Nice. So it's like, you, you know, on, on an SSL you would have auxes for effects and cues for headphone mixes. It's a similar type of concept. So it's like really easy to understand if you're new to it, you know.
Yeah, we typically find when we're working between external pre's and monitoring on the SSL, our headphone mixes don't change that much. You know, so having the ability to set something up that recalls each time, there's always a place to start from. Absolutely. You know, it, it can change, of course, but I, I want to send a really good mix to my singer. Totally. You know, I, I, it's, so there's going to be compression, there's going to be EQ going on, so it sounds pretty much like a record. I want them to hear what they think is, you know, even there's going to be another stage, but what they believe is a mix, yeah, so they can sure. be inspired. Or obviously the opposite. Sometimes you want the opposite. I, I, you mute the whole thing and just have the acoustic guitar and, and get an int intimacy out of it, even though it might have a band coming in. Totally. So I like that idea. So, so, so just, just to make this obvious, so you can see it, I'm going to move I'm some assuming faders. You can, you, you can save those moves. Um, yeah, well, all, all moves are saved, and you have like okay. a persistent undo. So even if you close the session and open it yeah. four weeks later, you can undo. And go but can back. you? save it like a template so when I come and I open up the session I've got a headphone mix ready to yeah, go. If you made a template and made okay. and made that the thing you started with every time. <laughs> Which I would because we would have we would have like we we're talking about with the bass we'd have our four different presets for different kinds of recordings you know and we would have yeah our vocal settings etc. Yeah we would we would yeah. do that. Here's a feature I know you, you'll you'll appreciate because of where we come from. I've just moved the faders to create a little monitor mix for myself. Yeah. I want to send that a duplicate of that mix to Q1. If you right click on a fader in the main mixer that is copy to send or copy to copy to nice. Q. so now we've got a starting point for our headphone mix right from our engineers balance nice so that's dead easy there's no sh weird shortcut you just have to right click on a fader and tell it to go to the queue that's really nice because they're probably sitting behind you for a few hours and they're going to sing yeah. good place to start so it's pretty cool because you can minimize this whole the whole mixer show elements that's kind of what's visible on screen at once you know and you can then bang through all the bits you need to see so. But is there two steps? So like when you go back to the headphone mixer, you've got you've got like a small go fader send. So you have your small fader send. And, and then these big faders if you want them. Oh, so this is just a view of the same thing? Yeah, yeah. So, so that, these these are the knobs. And that's so that, the that, but that's mirroring what you did with the small fader? Yeah, that, that, oh, okay. that is the small fader. And then it's just in a knob view if you want a Perfect. more condensed version. That's good. This will blow your mind where we're able to record and then do some stuff at the same time. So we're going to go into record on this bass DI track. But at the same time, I would like to make two new audio tracks below it. I'm going to set their inputs here. So this is going to be input two. This one's going to be input three. And I'm now going to punch those into record. I haven't had a single dropout. I'm able to create tracks, load plugins, punch in without knocking out what was there before. Which is, I've never, I've never seen that in no, any other platform. Yeah, that's really good. So if you're doing a vocal tracking session and you know you need more tracks downstream, you just keep going while you're yeah. mid-take. So that's pretty damn so amazing. So uninterrupted. Yeah, yeah, Perfect. yeah. Perfect, yep. So Great. that's quite unusual. And then uh, to wrap it off, we have the, obviously the Apollo integration, the lunar application, lunar extensions, but now we're yep. doing instruments. The lunar instruments run within lunar itself. First up, we have a Moog Mini Moog uh, done with Moog themselves. So as you'd expect here, uh, we have this wonderful component modeled analog synth. Amazing. Fat basses, creamy lead sounds. So that's, a, that's something you would buy and add to Great. Luna in the same way you would buy the Neve Summing or the Studer Tape. Fantastic. Uh, we also have, and this one's beautiful, you'll really like this, the Ravel Grand Piano. So Ravel is a Steinway Model B recorded at Oceanway Studios. And uh, it has some really nice features. So you can easily blend between your close mics and your room mics but we're doing something really unique in that we sampled every note obviously as you'd expect of this wonderful piano we've then used ua physical modeling to um, do something called ultra resonance which brings to life all the sympathetic string resonances you'd find in a piano which is a huge deal so this is yeah we think the best sounding piano instrument made the great thing about samples is they're beautifully recorded single pieces of genius Etc. However, the sympathy that we're talking about between strings, drums, for instance, like resonant frequencies that are going wrong are always uneven. And most um, most virtual instruments sound far too perfect. And then I spend half my life running random delays and detuning them, trying to get them to sound trying to get interesting. Sound. Yeah, yeah. You, I think you really like the Ravel. So that's something yeah, you could yeah. also it's buy fantastic. and add into Luna. But um, to finish up, we have the shape instrument, which will come with Luna. So this is a free instrument. So what I love about this one is you can very quickly uh, write and create music. So it has a lot of sounds, takes a bit to load, but when you're in here with Shape, 
The default is the Ravel light, so you get a version of that piano included with Luna. Yeah. But it's a four-part um, sort of sampler slash synthesis engine designed right. by us. So you can add, for example, strings here from uh, Spitfire Audio, our partner in London. So shout out to those guys. Yeah, they're amazing. Wonderful stuff, often recorded at Air Studios. Yep. You then have um, some wonderful electric guitars by, uh, or bass guitars by Orange Tree samples out here. Yep. And you can then chuck in other content, like for example, drums, you've got, you know, claps, stomps, rap kit, uh, vinyl hip hop kits and stuff. Some of them are made by us and some other people. So it's a four part engine. You have mutes and solos for each part, two yep. effects ends, and there are two effects engines. So these are UA standard effects. You have delays, some uh, compression, some distortion, auto yep. wire, filtering. Uh, rotary speaker, phaser, modulation effects, and then reverbs. So we could put, for example, a whole reverb on effects one, and then on effects two, uh, flanger. And then we now have the ability to send my piano to the whole reverb, my strings to the whole reverb, my strat to a bit of flange and the reverb, and my wrap kit heavily into the flanger for some weird sounds if I wish, you know? And that's all there. And then finally, you've got this super quick way of making key splits. So. I might want to play the piano on half of my controller keyboard, so say here, and then yeah. have just a little section of strings to sure. play an octave's worth of melody or something, and then have, you Great. know, I remember these days. Random. Yeah, so super quick. Yep. When we'd have all, our, all of our keyboards separate off so you could go doom ka doom doom ka wah, wah, wah. Yeah. I remember those days. Yeah. It was fun. It wasn't quite as easy as that, though, on the early synths and the early... Well, no, so, like, see yeah. how quick that is That's to work. That's great. And so really good. You'll be able to write with this, use Oxide Tape, multi-track record, use your Apollo or Arrow, and then add the extra, you know, extra pseudo tape console and the other instruments. And that is Luna. That's the whole thing. And it's I know free. that's a long video. Well, yeah, the bass is free, obviously, and then you add, like, the Neve summing and things like that. Sure. But, you know, straight out of the box, you're going to... With also the fact that you get some plugins free with your Apollo anyway. Yep. So you've got UA 610 preamp and right. Marshall Plexi Classic guitar amp in there. And so you, just, you basically have everything you need if you're a writer to, or producer to just make everything, you know. Wonderful. And then you've got, like we, we said earlier, the ability to bring in AAF or drag and drop audio and a really nice bounce function. So you can easily go, I'll take my main mix down. I'm gonna take my drum bus for just my drums or whatever to go and play live off, off yep. track. And you can even do your individual tracks. So you could have you know, the ability to take stems to a different workstation if you wish and take them with or without effects. And that's kind of how you, that's pretty much the whole thing, start to finish recording all the way to output, you know? Amazing, absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. Thanks, my dude. I've got the <laughs> dance racks, as I keep saying, so I apologize for already hearing me say that, but Tom, thank you so no much. No worries, get well soon, man. Thank you, I hope you get a chance to come over to the studio this I'd week. I'd love to, yeah, great fingers crossed, man. Yeah, it'd be great to see you. Thank you. This is really cool. Thank you. Leave any comments and questions below. I don't know if I can answer them, but maybe Tom can. Yeah, and if not, youaudio.com. Okay, exactly. <laughs>